I got something to tell you. You didn't let that your pop do any kind of vibe check, but that's okay. Let's get rolling. Do your job, okay? Do yeah. your job. That's the most important thing is we do your job. I don't know what he was expecting him to do for the first five weeks of the season. <laughs> Ready for another uh, another great week, guys. Thank you so much for checking out last week's episode. We're pretty happy with the numbers there. So please, if you're new, checking out our pregame pod. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. We've made ourselves a promise this week. We spent 40 minutes harping on the Bears game. We're not getting into it. We're burning the tape. We've moved on, and we're going straight in to the Falcons. So ahead of the Falcons game, Pop. Where are your vibes at? How are you feeling? I want to pose a question that maybe we can use the vibe check off of. Does this feel like a must-win game to you? After what we saw last week and where we're headed, does this feel like a must-win? You know, you saw the title. It said, is it a must-win in Atlanta for the Commanders? Do you think this is a must-win game? Of course. Agreed. Yeah. I mean, you you can't go, would that be two and four? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think I think it's 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 a must win, but it's also more about how the game plays out and goes. Yeah. You know, if if Atlanta happens to play their asses off and you know somehow pulls out a close one, but you you yeah, and that game going, that was a good performance by the team. That's one thing, but if we get thoroughly outplayed now coached again and don't look ready, it's going to get interesting around around D.C. Definitely, definitely. I think uh, for me, and you can throw out all that, uh, you know, if we play well but Atlanta plays better, we can throw all that out. This needs to end in a W. I don't care how we get it done. We need well, to it's do hard to imagine a scenario where – we play well and don't win, I guess. Yeah. You know, it's hard to imagine that scenario, but um, yeah. 100%. Um, but I'm not doing the dance that we did in Philly. Um, I'm not doing the dance not. that we not, did not against, against Buffalo. The Falcons. No, this, is a, this needs no. to be a win. This is just the bottom line. This has to be a win. This is the time of the year where you start to really see who, what, who's what. This is now like the the slow star and that kind of stuff is not um, – it's not a factor anymore. Now we're into the season. We're five games in. Everybody kind of is starting to have an idea of who everybody is. The surprises are out there. The disappointments are out there. Um, and it's time to – it's time to show up. I think we got to win this game. If you look at where the vibes are after that Chicago game across the fan base, talking a lot about firing, talking a lot about making changes, talking a lot about trading players and that kind of stuff. And it's time to it's time to win this football game. If we so let me get this straight. Have son. a chance this season. We need to win this game. Hundred percent must right. win game. Must win game. I just want to make that hundred percent clear. <laughs> it's a it's a must win game for me. I don't care how we get there. I want to see a win. So on to Atlanta, if we may here. Not that's the a, best. I got something to tell you. You didn't let mm-hmm. that your pop do any kind of vibe check, but that's okay. Let's get rolling in it. Do your job, okay? Do yeah. your job. <laughs> That's the most important thing this week. Do your job. So for <laughs> for fans that maybe aren't as tuned in, that's not Pop telling me to read the teleprompter. That is Ron Rivera put that sign up over the door this week. That's apparently the big change is now he's expecting players to do what they're supposed to do, which I don't know what he was expecting them to do for the first five weeks <laughs> of the season. But – He's expecting the commanders to do their job this this week. So we'll see if that makes a change. I think John Allen ought to take that side and put it right above Jack Del Rio's office and maybe put another one above Ron. You office. know what? I, here's what I think about that. I think rep- the reporters that even reported on that and spent segments complaining about it are dweebs. Yeah, that's you. Come on. The coach can do whatever they want to do to 
they, they got to come up with ways to motivate players, motivate the team, whatever he wants to do, put signs up, wear T-shirts, give speeches. That's cool. Let him do yeah. what he wants to do. It's totally Let him talk fine. to each other. You know, I heard that he was kind of hoping that Terry McLaurin was just going to put a sign up on his own. You know, let the players handle it themselves, but he was kind of disciplined. He had to actually do his job <laughs> and do something to fire the squad up. Uh, you, think Ron, you think Ron was up on a stepladder with, <laughs> with the neighbor? I think, you know how I think it went? As the players were walking in. You remember? During, when, the, during the, you know, as the offensive and defensive coaches were having their meetings, he, yeah. he was up on a little, <laughs> could, you know. You know what I think happened? You remember when we would have the projects in elementary school and I would come to you at like 930 on a Tuesday night and be like, Dad, I need poster board now. I think Rod did that to his wife. On, on Who's Monday our special night. teams coach? Uh, Maybe he had Tress Way hold the ladder. <laughs> hey, Tress. Hey, Tress. <laughs> Tress, come here. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think he went to his wife at about 11 o'clock on Sunday night. Babe, we got to go get some poster board. I got an idea. Yeah. I got That's enough. Here. Enough of that. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, going into Atlanta, we're going to hit the scouting report real quick before we get into uh, the three things the commanders need to do to do their jobs and beat the Falcons. But scouting report in Atlanta is this is a team that kind of reminds me of the Tennessee Titans in a way. It's, it's not the best team in football, but it's a very well-coached team, and it's a team that you expect is going to give you a tough fight. This is not a team that loses 37-3. to <clears throat> This is a team that is going to fight every week. They're going to show up. They're going to play their game. And you might be better than them, but they're going to do what they're supposed to do. They're going to do their jobs every week. Sneaky on defense, just generally tough. Uh, Jesse Bates is a stud at safety. He was in Cincinnati. He's played at an all-pro level several times. Um, Just in general, really great player there. Um, Otherwise, offensively, you've got the big – Big one to deal with there is Bijan Robinson. That's the big name. But uh, no pun intended, they've got some huge assets at wide receiver physically. Mac Collins, 6'4", dudes like Superman. Drake London, also I think 6'4". Kyle Pitts is a physical freak. They don't necessarily spread the ball around super well because Desmond Ritter is a quarterback. And Desmond Ritter, not a guy. This is a guy that went ahead of Sam Howell. I think he went in the third round. He was the second quarterback drafted in that class, Um, but not necessarily a guy that I think is going to have a long and fruitful career in the NFL as a starter, at least. Um, But we'll see. You know, I mean, they were talking about shipping out Justin Fields, and we saw what happened there last week. So we're just going to have to see at the end of the day. Um, But that's my general We got a Ritter Hal showdown then. Yeah. We're going to run the football. They are going to run the football between Bijan, who's a stud, of course, and uh, Tyler Algier, who's also a really good back. Frankly, I think Algier would be having a breakout year right now had they not drafted Bijan. That's right. That's right. We're playing the mustache this week. Yeah, we're playing the stash this week. You know, I thought the, <laughs> if things were going a little bit better for the Commanders, I might have I might have busted out the stash for the pod. But unfortunately, at two and three, and after losing forty to twenty to the Chicago Bears, the team is not good enough for me to make cosmetic damages to myself over yet, but we'll see. Maybe we turn that around after this week. Um, so pop other than maybe getting the Gillette or a dollar shave club or something like that, guys bring up, bring it on for the sponsors. We can give you the special shout out for the post game segment. We're ready. Um, what are some of your three keys to beating this Falcons team? Some of my three, you want them all, you want all three me, or just some give of your, them? Give me your three keys. Do your job. <laughs> All right, I'll do my job. Um, so I've got, you know, an obvious one, but one that is an obvious one going into the game, but it's got to get done. Is we got to stop Bijan, right? So simple as that. Got to shut him down. Got to contain him. I'd like to see us rattle Ritter, right? Yeah. I mean, just, you know, let's let's be aggressive and let's – Let's get let's rattle the kid and let's let our you know our our first round draft picks hunt and do their yeah. jobs. Um, and then I my third one is a fast start by the offense and a consistent game wow. throughout. Right? Yeah. Because do you have a do you have a screen share 
on my laptop because you just went three for three on my keys. There we go. It's it, it, wow. efficient. But, you know, I do I do like a lot about what I'm seeing out of EB and Sam. You know, I think that we knew it's a new offense. It's a completely new system for this team. It's a brand new quarterback. Regardless of, like, new system, you've got, a you know, essentially a rookie first-time starter playing. And there's obviously an adjustment that needs to be made by everybody, the receivers and all of that. But – the offense, I think, has been making good progression. And, you know, I expect that to continue in Atlanta and it's going to need to continue in Atlanta. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be that's going to be key. I think, you know, my keys were obviously the same. So well done, Pop. You cooked on those. I think that's pretty much the the outline is simple. And we were talking a little bit pre-pod about the struggle trying to put these keys together because it's, it's tough. You know, the, it's very, it can be very similar week to week what we need to do, but the recipe is there. We know how this team needs to win. And I think another emphasis I want to make here, we got to see some complimentary football start to build. And unfortunately there's just no opportunity for complimentary football when your defense is as bad as our defense has been and has given up those big plays. The offense doesn't have time. You know, some of it is, we want to see the offense make adjustments, but if the defense is only on the field for two plays, how much time is there to even look at the tape and to make adjustments? If the defense is only on the field for two plays and gives up a 50-yard bomb to DJ Moore and the offense is right back out there, well, I guess we're just going right back to the game plan. And, you know, EB talked about it in his presser. He said, hey, I'm not able to stick to the game plan because we're in these huge deficits. You know, when you're down 20, the game plan has to go out the window. you got to start flinging that thing. And I, I don't yeah. disagree with them at all there. I think that's a I think that's a really good point. And I think offensively too, you know, something that didn't get talked about because of how terrible the defensive performance was last week. But offensively, they come out, they hit you in the mouth for a forty yard bomb to DJ Moore, and the drive goes fast, a couple busted plays, you're at home. That offense can't come out and go three and out. You gotta follow up. And that happened on back to back drives, three and out, three and out. We can't start the game like that. We got to help our defense a little bit too offensively, even though, of course, offense has been the main concern. We can't be starting out games going defense down. Defense has been the main concern. To three, or defense has been the main concern, excuse me. Even though the defense hasn't done anything for us, we need the offense to do their jobs too. And we can't be starting these games 27 to 3, 21 to 3 things along those lines. We need to see what we saw from Philly. Get down the field methodically, run the ball, get in the end zone, get three. These drives need to be ending in field goals or touchdowns or you go for it on fourth and one on the 10-yard line, that kind of stuff. These drives cannot be ending in punt, punt, interception, fumble, punt, whatever. Um, Well, you talked about it's complimentary and it's complimentary on both sides, right? You've got to – if your offense is struggling, you got to have your defense step up. Make a stop. Right? If yep. your defense is struggling, you've got to, you know, you got to have some success on offense. But yeah. if your offense is going out, three and out, three and out, three and out, and getting shut out in the first half, and then the defense can't stop, you know, a drop of water. Yeah. Um. Then, yeah, you're in trouble, and and that's been a problem. And I think from the defense too, you know, we need to see the adjustments. Clearly what we're doing is not working. So what are we going to do to change things up to, to make adjustments? You know, they had a mini buy. They've had plenty of time to rest and reset and reevaluate. You know, you definitely want to see a, a, a different level of performance and adjustments and making sure that we're putting players in the right position to succeed. That, that to me, I, you know, you and I have talked a lot about it and I agree you know, we both had fast start by the offense on our thing. I'm not worried about the offense. You know, bar one really poor performance, the offense has, has performed and put up points and done enough to win games. You know, the the defense has, has, has been a real issue and problem regardless of the quality of the perform of, of the um opponent. And yep. we've got to see them make changes, you know, yep. you know, whatever it might be, scheme, personnel, whatever. But I'm definitely looking for that, um, you know, come Sunday. I agree 100 percent. And I think 
I think scheme has got to, the changes have got to be made. You know, everybody talks about for years, the criticism of Del Rio was, oh, we play this soft zone. He lets everybody get away underneath, blah, blah, blah. And now all of a sudden this year, despite having really good zone defense personnel, I know I'm getting a little nerdy here. I'll try to keep it brief. But despite having really good zone defense personnel, we're running a ton of man. And I went into last week and I said, you know, we should follow the Bills game plan against us in week three. We should be running zone coverage, keep the ball in front of us. And we're running a lot of man. We're seeing a lot of individual mistakes. A lot of guys, Kendall Fuller trying to jump routes, not working out. Um, Manuel Forbes trying to jump routes. A little bit of that preseason talk that we heard about they're going to really emphasize takeaways. That's not working. They're not taking the ball away, and they're getting burnt. So we got to see that go back to what has worked for this team in the past, which is going to be a little bit zone heavier, in my opinion, in the secondary. Let the guys help each other out. Let's be smart, okay? If Drake London has six catches in the first quarter, maybe we double him. Maybe we bring some safety help over the top to cover him. Maybe we make any amount of changes on the defensive side of the ball. I would love to see that. We've seen the offense make changes, not seeing much from the defense. Um, but I, I agree with you, Pop. I think thinking on our feet, making adjustments, getting the offense out at a quick start is going to be the most important thing. And uh, got to find a way to contain Bijan because I think one for one, he's got to be in the top five most dynamic talents we've seen this year, probably top three in terms of just the, his ability to make you miss in the open field and his athleticism. Um, but I'm about ready to wrap this thing up on the commander's thing. Pop. Gonna, what do you think? We're going to predict what, what we think is going to actually happen in the game. Yeah. We got to give the prediction. That's how we wrap it up. You, you kind of tend to forget that prediction part. Got to give the prediction. <laughs> what do you got, We got to talk about what our vibe is. What do we think is going to actually happen in this game? I think, I like the, I don't know, Falcons minus two and a half is the line last I checked it. Um, pulling it up here. Yeah, Falcons minus two and a half still there. I it's right there like, on the outline, son. I like the over, 42 and a half. I like the over there. And I like Atlanta. Uh, I'll take the commanders here. I'm saying it's a must-win game. I want us to win. You got to stick with the boys. That's how I'm rolling. I think it's a bounce back game for us. I really do. I think, you know, I think they're going to come out, play really well. Yeah. I think, you know, we saw a really good, you know, game against Philly and then as bad about, you know, about as good as it gets without winning yep. against Philly and then about as bad as it gets against the Bear. And I, I think that they're, when they're playing well, they're closer to that team that was out there against Philly. Um, is inexcusable to you know to perform the way they did against the Bears, but it, it happened and it happens. I think it's going to be a bounce back game. I think we we win this one. Um, you know, I don't think it's going to be a blowout, but I think it's going to be a decisive win against Atlanta. I think we're going to see a really good performance all around. I'm pretty confident, and I'll, I'll smash yeah. the over as well because I think. That Sam and the boys. I what I'm most encouraged about is I think that offense is building, right? Yeah. I think I think we haven't seen anywhere near the best of what that offense can give us. And I think, you know, and I, I'm so impressed by what you hear from E B. You know, one thing that I wasn't sure about with E B is like, is he kind of tied into how he wants to run things and and when you hear him talk, he's grinding, he's working, he's constantly trying to figure out ways to do things. He made a joke in the press conference today about how he used to argue with Reed about putting in more run run plays. Yeah. Right? So, you know, the fact that they passed the 55 straight. So he's hyper aware of the situation and, you know, wanting to get B-Rob more involved. He specifically spoke about that. So I think this offense is building – and the defense has got to regress to the mean or, you know, the, man, not regress, but I don't know, improve no, to the, the mean, the improve right. to the mean, right? Positive because, regression. yeah, I don't think that's regression when you improve. But anyway, 
That, um, that's how it's used colloquially in sports statistics all the time. Positive okay. regression for sure. All right. That, that's I'll, that's I'll, okay. People, your I'll viewers take, will understand what you mean. But improved of the mean, right? I think they're not as they're not, you know, they're they're not going to continue to give up thirty plus a game. They're yeah. better than that personnel wise. They may not be the top five unit we thought they were, but if they can just perform as number 15, 16, and that offense continues to build teams like Atlanta shouldn't be a problem for this team. So yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. That is what we're hoping for. There is still a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a stretch coming up here with some winnable football games. So maybe we start chopping some wood. We get out of this thing, six of four, something like that. You start feeling pretty all right. Right. So let's move I so. on. I hope so too. Not that I particularly think that's what's going to happen, but we've predicted the victory in Atlanta, and that is step one. That is the job this week. Let's do our job, Pop. Let's move on. Let's hit a little bit of week six picks, a little bit of bottom bets for the people still listening. What do you say? I think we do it. Real quick, real quick. Got to give ourselves a pat on the back here. 20 minutes. And 46 seconds into this recording, not one mention of Taylor Heineke on the Atlanta Falcons. Not one mention. Who? Who else is doing that? And we're moving on. We're not spending any more time. We're just letting you know Please. how great we are. Please move on. <laughs> Pop's favorite Washington quarterback in history. Quick kick outs of the week before we get to this. Put some respect on my boy Brock Purdy. <laughs> Put some respect on is my boy Brock Purdy. Is there a and I hate Can I get a little of those gummies he's, <laughs> he's snacking on? Can get him down the street here real quick. I hate to do this. I hate to do this to Dan Orlovsky because he's been pretty high on Sam Howell. He's been defending the boy since the beginning, and I love him for that. He was also, he also pretty high on Carson Wentz. And he also now loved he's your boy pretty Carson. High on Mac Jones, who he says if you put Mac Jones in San Francisco, he's going to do – just as well as Brock Purdy. I have news to you. Mac Jones is throwing the ball to the wrong football team regularly. That's a problem. That's not good. I think you would be shocked at the amount of quarterbacks that you put in San Francisco that would do worse than Brock Purdy. Put some respect on my boy Brock Purdy's name. I think he is a top 10 quarterback in this NFL, maybe top five by the end of the season. We'll have to see. I think right now there are a few guys you'd rather have operating your offense. Let's move on. Some bold statements there. Get past yeah, the yeah, I'm not sure week. about that, but we don't have time to debate that. But I do think saying that Mac Jones is would perform as well as Brock Purdy has, you know, no. It's ridiculous. Um, I yeah. think he Check that clip out if you haven't. It's pretty funny. Yeah, the reactions go to it and that. everything. Got to yeah. stay with my boy Rex Ryan on that one. <laughs> Rex Ryan uh, is hilarious. Our new defensive coordinator, potentially. I was going to say, perhaps. You know, <laughs> Sexy Rex. I would have found it. I would have found it. Be that. exciting. I'd be pleased on that. It would be more fun to watch than Del Rio, that's for sure. Uh, week five recap on the bottom beds. Oof. Terrible. Oof. Ah. That was rough. Pop went one. Man, I got too I high, too third. quick, son. Yeah, I told you not to increase the units. I hope you listen. <laughs> Said that's how you get humbled. May or may uh, not have listened to you. I thought you want the underdog. I'm on I'm on a heater with the underdog. I'll leave it at that. Pop one and four. I'm two and three on the week. So for the season, pop 15, 10, and one, down 13, 12, and one. So I kind of starting to catch up to you there. Only a couple games back. This week, catching up, you went two and three. You're you hanging by a thread, son. I, I gained a game on you. I'm only two games back. We got what, 12 games left in the season? We're, All right. I guess killing. that's one way to think about it. So, Ravens minus four at the Titans in London. Please stop doing these games. Pop, what do you got? <laughs> yeah, they're back at the same stadium, too. I was kind of surprised by that. I thought they'd spread yep. it around a little bit, but back at uh, Tottenham, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Yep. But uh, oh, Ravens really let me down last week. Talking to you, Insider. They let me down. But uh, I know that had to be painful. But I, I still, I still, man, it's just those London games are so tough. But I'm still going to go Ravens on this one. Taking the Titans. I'll give you two reasons. Mike I knew Ravens that was beat. coming. I knew Mike, it was coming. This is like a little mini rivalry. 
Mike Vrabel's team has played great defense. Lamar has not been taking care of the football. Um, and they've got a really great run defense down in Tennessee. And the main reason I'm taking the Titans is because it's minus four. If it was minus two and a half Baltimore, I might think about taking the Ravens. But I think in London, these sloppy defensive games, two offenses that haven't really gotten going, I think it's going to be close. Solid reasons. Uh, Seahawks at Bengals minus two and a half. I'm going to start this one. I'm taking the Bengals. Pop, what you got? Bengals started looking like the Bengals last week. I do like my Hawks, though. How could, you know, you, you zig, I'm going to zag. I'm going to say Seahawks get this one. At least All right. keep it close enough. Hey, there's two games we picked opposite there. If I go two for two to start the week, we're dead even. Lions there you go. That's a good three. point. Lions minus three at the Buccaneers. A lot of people saying the Bucs might be fraudulent. Um, I think they're playing good football. What do you like there, Pop? Lions I'll probably the, the hottest Lions. team in the league right now. I got the Lions as well. Um, Lions are playing out of their mind this year. Really like that team. Really like their offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson. Her, so, he loves watching so you're saying DC. they're hotter than the 49ers? Just, I just want to get you on record. And, and the right. Eagles that are both undefeated. I said might be, first of all. And second of all, I think everybody can understand. So might be, of, might means might not be as well, right? I think what everybody can understand is in terms of relative to what our expectations were for them, they are well outperforming what everybody thought they were capable of. They look hot. They're playing great football on both sides of the ball. So that's what hottest team a, in the league means? It's hard to find a weakness on that. It's hard to find. I know you struggle with colloquialism, Pop. I understand. I know it's hard. Be They're regressing to be the hottest team in the league. I got to be very little. I got it. Beat the Kansas City Chiefs. That's a better win than the than the Niners had. You said hottest team in but the league. I said one of the might be one of the hottest teams in football right now. Oh, we got to rewind that tape. We got to rewind that tape. If anybody's still with us, Giants and Bills, <laughs> Bills and a fourteen and a half. Pop is fourteen and a half enough points for you to take. Tyrod Taylor and the New York Giants. This is the one game that I thought about. So Tyrod's playing for him. That's right. That's a good little nugget there. It could mean something. Tyrod ain't better. bad. <laughs> I think he's better. Tyrod ain't bad. Um, <laughs> and you know he's going to be wanting to prove something there. God, I don't like that now. I was going to smash the Bills. Yeah. But I, I'll still stick with the Bills. I mean, 14 and a half is a lot to give up. But I think they're going to be angry. They're at home. And the Giants are just, you know, a, a train wreck right now. But that, I hate yeah. giving up 14 and a half points. You know, the Bills are one of those teams that blow teams out. That's the thing. Like, I would say generally minus 14 and a half teams coming back from London, even if it's a better team. Like, if this was the Chiefs, I would maybe take the Giants because the Chiefs will let off the gas at the end of games when they know they've won. And so you get the coverage on the back end. The Bills don't do that. The Bills will hang 50, 60 points on you and not think twice about it. So for that reason, I'm taking the Buffalo Bills here as well. It's just a team that they don't stop once they're hot. And I think are they at, they're at home as well. Um, you know, a little interesting Sunday tidbit Sunday night football. Here, little interesting tidbit here. Giants, head coach, Bills, former offensive coordinator, Brian Dayball, Monday night football. You got the Cowboys' former offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, now in L.A., offensive coordinator of the Chargers there. Chargers' offense looks really great this year. Cowboys' offense sucks. So that's pretty crazy. I don't know if that's the first time that's ever happened. Probably not. But, little, you know, this is the inside info you only get here at Dom and Pop. So that being said, Cowboys minus two and a half at the Chargers. Do we need to – should we count down 3-2-1 and say we're taking the Chargers, or do you think the Cowboys bounce back? So you're picking the Chargers. I'm picking the Chargers. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 borderline against my religion to pick the Cowboys. Um, but you're about to do it? Sounds like you want to do it. I'm not convinced it's the right – not the right pick. I do think the Cowboys are a better football team. I do. But I know if I pick them – I'm going to get burned. For yeah. that reason and that reason alone, I'll go with the Golden Boy and the Chargers. But I think 
I'm, I'm kind of going against my better judgment here. I'll just say that for the record. Yeah, I mean, Justin Herbert dealing with a fractured finger in his non-throwing hand. So if you think that's a factor, I don't think that's a factor, personally. You'd rather it so, not be fractured. but I The Cowboys, I mean, their fan base is ornery. You got, you got pictures of people with Dak Prescott jerseys mopping the floor with yeah. Dak's jerseys. They're out for blood. So, you know, I think that maybe being on the road – Hearing all the noise that they heard uh, from last week's game could, uh, you know, they, 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 they're going to be a motivated bunch, I think, playing, playing next week. Now, I hope they get their asses beat. But 100%. I think Cowboys is the smarter pick there. But I, I'm gonna, yeah. as a matter of principle, I'll go Chargers. Just I think you'll see dumb. A, always I think dumb you'll in see betting. As many Cowboys fans as you will Chargers fans at SoFi, unfortunately, Without the Chargers fan base is just not not it right now. No offense to the Chargers loyal. I do like your team, um, but they're just not packing out SoFi. You see a lot of road teams there. It's a destination trip. Um, you'll see the boys there later on in the year. Um, but, yeah, you got to go Chargers here. Chargers, I think their offense is just elite. That's just Agreed. kind of the bottom line. Um, Austin Eckler may be back as well. You're looking for him to play Monday night. So if Eckler's playing, that's just one more step for the Chargers. Um, what do you say we wrap this thing up, Pop? Huh? It's been a pretty solid, solid we should. Here. I think the boys, we did our jobs. We always I do. I think Ron Rivera would be proud, even though we were calling for him to be fired last week. But Ron Rivera would be proud. And Ron, we didn't say he should be, be clear. fired. Let's be clear. I said it, but it, it's okay. Let's be clear. Ice cream on us if you want to come on the pod. Still available. If you get a win. You got to get a win to earn the ice cream. Second scoop to get the win. Second scoop for the win. No, nah, just a gig. You got to get a win. <laughs> All right. I like Period. it. I like it. Rob, you get a win. Ice cream cones on us. Come on the pod. Gladly. Anything, anything you like. Sprinkles, fudge dipped, however you want it. Cherry, whipped cream, the whole thing. Anyway. What kind of an ice cream guy? Which What, what flavors do you think Ron goes for? Oh, man. Ron's like a butter pecan guy. That's how he strikes me. <laughs> he strikes me as a butter pecan type of guy. I think Ron is definitely like he likes butter pecan, like pralines and cream. Like that's the that's the feel I get from him. Like Jamoka Hamid. You did him maybe. dirty. What do you think Ron's Ron's having? He's. I think it's basic chocolate and vanilla, man. No nonsense. I think you're just projecting your ice cream preferences onto Ron. I think that's really what it is. I'm, uh, I think it's straight butter pecan for sure. But let's wrap this thing up without further ado. Guys, if you've still been here, if you're watching through 32 minutes of this thing, you clearly like us. Don't forget to subscribe, like, leave us a comment. Let us know what flavor ice cream do you think Ron Rivera likes? <clears throat> what do you think he likes to celebrate with after a win? Is it a different flavor after a loss? Let the people know. Put it down in the comments below. That's how we'll know you've stuck with us. Without further ado, I've been Dom. Just pop. Thanks for another day.